Alright. I think everything is working. Hello and welcome to Plugin Along, a stream dedicated to Lotro plugins. Last time on Plugin Along, we updated the Festival Buddy 2 UI. Um, op, uh, options UI to allow us to configure more than one quick guide because there were a lot of assumptions made when I added the first quick guide for midsummer about there's only one quick guide so you don't need to consider what to do for more than one. Today we're going to try to finish up remaining Yule and in league ill association parts of Festival Buddy and uh, there's not a lot of time left to use it for this Yule, but it'll be there ready. Yule will be there ready uh, day one for the next Yule, and in the Ale Association comes around regularly with other festivals. So I think that's going to be fun to have a quick guide in there. However, just like I had originally made an assumption that there's only one quick guide, I also still have an assumption that there's only one quick guide per festival. And in the Ale Association, definitely. Uh, pushes back against that because there's all sorts of different ways you can optimize your in league ill association routes based off of do you have a hunter to assist with travels, how many milestones do you have, all this kind of thing. So I definitely have thoughts in my head about how to maybe support multiple uh, quick guides per festival, but that's a, that's a future concern. It's it's a, currently there's zero or one per festival, and that'll take some work to to add support for that. Anyway, uh, as always, feel free to jump into chat with your th thoughts and questions about plugins specifically or Lotro in general. Uh, and in the meantime, we are going to get on into it. Uh, as, uh, as predicted, I went ahead and set up a cat cam, and therefore we have no cats. <laughs> they have gone elsewhere. So we'll, uh, we'll keep an eye out for them. Okay, what do I have up on the stream, uh, screen right now? So a thing that I wanted to start doing was to have the idea of color highlighting of, of concepts. Um, what I was noticing was that there was just this stream of text up on the screen uh, for one of these quick guides, and it was a little bit harder to parse, okay, what's going on? And so I did an experiment of adding in some color highlighting uh, where you can you can see okay every uh, quest that's listed in here is blue and it's blue because that's the setting that we've got here in settings so if we wanted all of our quests to be I don't know green like really bright green there we go uh, we could do that instead um, I'm gonna leave it in blue because I'm used to it but I wanted to bring in uh, that that color picker library that's available on Lotro interface. Uh, and that's what we see here in this window. Uh, I wanted to bring that in, but also um, have some concept of, okay, you've changed the color, but maybe you want it to go back to the defaults. Okay, well, we have a default button now. There's also just a global enabling of these things, but I also want to add um, uh, type-specific checkboxes to enable or disable, because maybe I want the locations to all be uh, highlighted, like where am I going, but once I'm there, I don't need any uh, further assistance. Once I'm in Oster and, and Harluk in the Lonelands, there's only one thing you can do. You can talk to Wald Mug Mugwort, uh, so the rest of the highlighting isn't as useful as where am I going. Uh, so I'd like to add a checkbox for each one of these things, so that instead of a label, they are a checkbox, and then we can store that setting of are we using this color, and if so, what color is it? Um, neat. So uh, I was following along on this quick guide while Little Redhead was running it uh, on the previous stream, and all of the auto detection seems to be working really well on English client. So we're going to instead uh, take a look at what's the current state of Yule. So I'm going to start by going through the Yule quick guide, which has not been uh, color highlighted yet, uh, but that's okay. We're going to go through that uh, and get a sense of what, if anything, is still needs to be done. Um, as far as the quick guide, or as far as the um, the forwarding of the quest guide to whatever the current objective is. So we're going to start by running over to Mara Sandy Downs and pick up In Spirit of Yule. And this is going to be a pretty fast uh, uh, run through, so if you have any questions, toss them out there. But otherwise, I'm going to assume that you're already kind of familiar 
uh, with this because if we're at the end of the fuel. So hopefully you've had a chance to give it a try yourself. Okay, so we can see the next objective is moving them off and the quest guide has advanced here. And something I was doing over, over the last week was adding in uh, maps to give uh, clues as to where you're going for the quest. So if you're doing moving them off and you wanted to do it all in one go, then you would be picking up the quest from Guard Kember, you'd be talking to Barrett Noel here, and you would do a loop in one direction or the other. I tend to go clockwise, but you know, whichever direction works for you. Um, Ted Ives, uh, the two Judsons, Bill Hyde, and then come on back to Guard Kember. Um, however, and this is possibly, oh, there we go. Uh, possibly not helpful, but you know it's something we can do. So I tossed it in there. Is the next thing we're doing is we're taking the abominable, abominable snow beasts, and and so we progress the quest guide to say, hey, that's the next thing we're doing. But once we've got it, the next thing we're doing should be going back to moving them off. That didn't work. Uh, okay, let's come on into the code and see what's going on there and why maybe it didn't work. Nope, not that one. Okay, so that's quest guides Yule. Oh, uh, but not the English, or not the language specific stuff. All right, so there's uh, three structures here, the, the chains, the lookups, and the the individual items. And we can see the bottom of the beasts that should have done a load quest of moving them off. Interesting. But why didn't it? Oh, because we got Yule Festival daily. Oh, that's, that's funny. Um, Yule Festival daily, daily auto applied, and that's just the nature of it. So, oh well, we're gonna go ahead and do our moving, moving them off. We don't know when Yule Festival daily is going to apply. Um, hmm, I have to think about that. Sergio so says good evening and happy New Year. Yes, for anyone who's following the Gregorian calendar. Happy your calendar year has increased a week. Okay, we're going to advance a few of the moving them offs. If it helps you feel better about shooing them away, uh, I do encourage you to uh, have the head cannon that we're actually part of an underground resistance movement against the mayor, and we're just, you know, we're shooing them off, but they're just going back to resistance headquarters, get a nice warm meal, uh, you know, uh, before they come out to continue uh, their crusade against the mayor. Uh, I, I find that uh, is a, uh, a better narrative than just like, oh yeah, go away. Okay, something Little Redhead was mentioning is that you can queue up multiple one of these uh, patrons. It is possible if you center yourself in the very middle to queue up all eight of them. And then uh, I just do one side and then I turn around and I do the other. You don't have to be facing in any particular direction to do it. Uh, and the key thing for this queuing is, is if you move at all, it empties your action queue. So you want to make sure that you're uh, centrally located between the two extremes, which is uh, probably this patron in front of the fire pit and this patron here. Now, this is something you can do in a lot of different cases. For instance, if you, one of your crafting is farming, you can toss 10 or 20 fields out underground and then queue up the harvesting of all those fields. And it can make it a little bit, uh, uh, maybe less RSI than trying to do it with your, uh, uh, with your mouse. Um, okay, so. We want to go ahead and pick up some of these quests, stuffing the stuffed, uh, unwilling firewood. Uh, but we want to take a look and see is Ona up, and Ona is up. So we're going to go pick uh, divert, and instead of doing tidying up, we're going to go ahead. Oh, when Ona progresses to the ten seconds, it's still possible to grab the quest from her right at the transition point if you are fast enough, which is very handy. Uh, but it does mean um, we will not be able to grab tidying up. So, um, if Ona is available, if uh, Big Stomach the Mall is available, I tend to do that first just to clear it out. Otherwise, I'll do tidying them up. They're mutually exclusive, but I want to start the Big Stomach of the Mall with Ona K as soon as possible because there is that multi minute possibly delay between when you pick up the quest and when you can actually start the competition. 
Oh, good point. Uh, Delirian uh, does point out that the Moving the Moth quest is not something that you, you cannot pick it up until you have done a, a Charitable Spirit at least once with Daily Utteridge back there in the uh, Servant's Quarters. Once you've done a Charitable Spirit, that unlocks Moving them Off, uh, which is why I like to headcanon it in that you know it's all part of the Resistance movement because you've, you've already worked with them, you've, you've already given them some money, you've already interacted with them at least once. You're like, okay, yeah, no, we, we know where the, the secret hideout is now. Uh, but just be aware of that. Um, uh, the Guard Kember over here will not offer Moving them Off until you've done the Charitable Spirit at least once. Okay, I'm not seeing anyone else standing by the table, uh, queuing up to eat food. I like not having competition for that. So we're going to go ahead and work on that. Okay, the Mr. Drink was not so great. Oh well. Um, okay, and we are going to go ahead and clear up all these so I can see the how much time is left on the quest guide here. Okay. So I'm mounted up, so there's no time timer here. Little Redhead likes to let these effects wear off. I just run with it. They were all pretty light, uh, you know, berries and mushrooms. So um, four berries and a mushrooms is almost nothing. Um, your mileage may vary depending on what was available at that first table. But I just don't have the time to uh, to deal with the trying to let it all wear off. There is a mystery drink here. Excellent. Let's give it a try. It was a good one. So, it's like we just waited four minutes. Alright, I am of course going for berries first, then mushrooms uh, as available. And that's because berries only give a 1% uh, speed debuff, mushrooms a 3%, it's not that bad. Uh, and then it gets worse from there. Eggs, 5%, uh, still not too bad, but bread and pie, you just do not want that during an eating competition. Now, why bother doing all of these if only the first one counts for the Daily Wrapper? Well, mostly the uh, the festival tokens. Um, and there's plenty of people who will just do the first table to get credit for the uh, the, the wrapper. The, uh, it's one out of ten, and um, just skip the rest because they don't need the tokens. And I probably don't need the tokens either. I've got 568. I'm not sure what I'm saving them up for. Uh, but remember, there are uh, MP there is an NPC where you can convert tokens from one festival to another at a loss. It's not a one to one. Uh, but if you're having trouble getting anniversary tokens, for instance, just use a bunch of Yule tokens. So I, I don't think it's ever a problem to have a, a stash of extra ones. Alright, uh, so that mystery drink did uh, successfully get rid of all of our debuffs. Uh, when that's the case, I'd like to go ahead and just chow down on the heavy stuff at the last table, maybe make it a little bit easier if someone comes um, behind. And we can see, we're at the last table, we still have 30 seconds left, we're chowing down on some dense bread, it's no problem. Okay, that was a little out of order, so we can go ahead and grab our tidying up from Basil. Uh, and that's nice, because we can go ahead and be the change we want to see in the world. We just went ahead and made a big mess at the eating competition, we can, we can kind of uh, tidy up after ourselves. I do a lot of um, keyboard um, selecting next item and using the item uh, so I don't have to try to click on these different things with my mouse. Uh, the default for selecting items, I actually don't remember what the default is, but I think it's delete. Uh, and the default for using uh, that item is the U key, but I've uh, rebounded to a key next to delete so uh, my fingers don't have to travel so far. And on a uh, keyboard shortcut note, I saw someone commenting that on some servers there are some uh, jokers who are standing around on top of Mara Sandy Down or have their cosmetic pets kind of covering her up, or not even cosmetic pets, um, their uh, lore master pets, uh, standing on top of her, making it harder to interact with her. But if you're very used to keyboard shortcuts, uh, go ahead and use your select nearest NPC key, which by default is bound to F10 to select Mara, and your use key, which again, by default bound to U, 
uh, and you do not need to be able to click on her to interact with her. You select her with a key, you use her with a key, and that pops open the quest uh, um, accept slash finish dialog, uh, no problem. So it's not uh, too often where that happens, where people are being intentionally kind of a um, rebel rousing, but uh, you do see a lot on some of the more uh, um, populated events like the treasure hunt because it only is for a couple days every few months you get a lot of people maybe who uh, charge in to try to do it and some of those NPCs are really important because they're giving you those picks that you need um, so that that's a way to bypass the crowd because there could be 20, 20 people standing around that one NPC and you just go ahead and select an NPC use the NPC no problem so it doesn't even have to be intentional it can just be a thing uh, yeah I could be running faster I'm so used to playing Minstrel, but Hunter has find the path. <laughs> so just be aware it's an option. Like I still w will click to interact with the NPCs a lot of the time, just because my, my my hand's usually on my mouse. Uh, but just be aware you have uh, some easy options. Okay, that is the end of tidying up. Uh, we already did the biggest summary of the mall, so we do not need to worry about. Um, getting rid of tidying up to to be able to get that quest. So instead of uh, turning in right now, we're just going to run out into the field. Again, if you're just doing this uh, for as fast as possible to get as much done, the broken snowman is perfectly acceptable. There this is a deed to uh, complete one of each of the snow people, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I've done it. But once you've done that, there's not a lot of benefit to picking one over the other, other than what do you want to do that day. And this quick guide assumes you want to go fast. Yeah, if you if you look at the uh, moving them off quest, just circling back to what Tellurian was talking about, it's really interesting because. Uh, moving them off has has a combined condition of you can't have a charitable spirit active, but you must have completed a charitable spirit at least once. Uh, so it's a it's a complicated condition for that one quest. and says, yeah, I'll finish the quest and run to uh, do something in real life for a short time. It's fully acceptable, but some want to uh, seem to want to annoy other people. Yeah, uh, it, it feels that way. And one of the problems is, unless someone's act actively taunting you, like, ha, 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 you can't click on the NPC, it's really difficult to tell the difference between they ran up, talked to the NPC, and then went to do something in real life versus they're intentionally trying to cause problems. There's not a, way, not a lot of ways to tell the difference between the two of those. Um, but certainly if they've parked a, uh, a uh, lore master style pet on top of the NPC, that feels a little bit more intentional. Like it's, it's still, still I, I could see it either way, but um, one could imagine a, a client that had the option to kind of hide uh, other people or make them semi-transparent compared to NPCs. Uh, but that's not currently an option in, in Lotro. So it's nice to know that there are uh, workarounds in case of, you know, of, of other people standing on NPCs intentionally or accidentally. Um, it doesn't really matter what the intent was. Seven the Stuffs is probably one of the most far-ranging of the quests. Uh, takes you all over. Uh, but we're going to come on over, uh, and this is a thing that I noticed uh, that I think is a bug, is that uh, internally when we do a load quest to load the next thing here, uh, I did not see this slash cheer um, hiding. And there's also a conversation of do we really need the slash cheer now that you also have the, uh, the emote button on your quest guide? And the answer is, uh, I don't know. Uh, it might be nice to have an option to turn that off, or maybe it's just not necessary anymore. Uh, but cheer, 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 and then we've automatically advanced stuff in the quest, but we can see the slash cheer didn't go away. Uh, so whatever the load quest mechanism is doing, it's missing that uh, recalculating the emotes window. 
Uh, so I've got that no noted down as a as a thing. I don't even know if it's a bug. Like it's, well, it is a bug. I don't know if it's worth fixing though. Um, versus for this particular quest, some people were saying, "Ah, oh, just get rid of it," because uh, well, the emote wasn't there when this uh, plugin first incorporated this feature. Now, yeah, it's a single emote quest, so the emote just appears next to the the quest on your tracker. And I think if your tracker has room and that quest isn't being tracked, the the uh, the act of putting the emote on the quest also adds it to your tracker. I think. <laughs> Delirian wishes for an NPC effect to shoo away people idling for more than a minute. <laughs> oh. I, oh. Hang on a moment. We need to turn off the escape key. Um, okay. So. Turning and moving them off. You can talk to Mara Sunny down here to turn in the daily, it's fine, but we're going to be back to talk to her later for the wrapper, so, you know, it's one less click if you do it later, but you, you can do it in whatever order. Okay, someone is chasing away the townsfolk right now, uh, so that means we're going to go ahead and bypass that and move on over to the stuff near the oven uh, section of the quest guide. One of the things I really wanted this quick guide for was to tell me which, and, and remind me which one of the five beggars uh, I've interacted with on the particular quest. Because that was, that was something that caught me more than a few times, was doing a partial run, and then it'd be like, you need to talk to Ted Ives, and I'd be like, I don't know where Ted Ives is. <laughs> Which one is Ted? Uh, so I'd still have to circle around trying to find where Ted is. Uh, and right now I know he's between Mara Sandy Downs and the Beggar Quarter, but I'm not going to remember that next Yule. Not right away, anyway. So having, having the ability to have it uh, tracked in here uh, felt really nice. All right, so while we're here, we can go ahead and turn in these four quests. Great. So I see rings on maps, so we can probably sneak back in here and grab these three and get ourselves back on track. Because when we come back in the front door, we're going to want to have already done these three so that when we get back to Daily Utteridge, we can turn that in. But in the meantime, let's go build a snow person. Alright, so one of these piles is the big pile. And I keep forgetting which one. That's it. Awesome. Well, I wanted to document that down. Um, so, we're going to go ahead and get the precise coordinates up and going. So, let's go ahead and install the um, precise coordinates plugin. Thank you, Thurlor. And in the in game plugin manager, remember that you need to hit this green circle if you've just added it. Uh, Lotro is not going to keep an eye on that directory. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get our precise coordinates. And that's whenever you do a slash LOC, it's going to go ahead and spit them out more than a single uh, decimal digit of precision. Um, okay, so I want to go ahead and record that in the quest strings here. Uh, so that's going to be pile. Okay, and that will be is the the giant version is at this. Cool. Uh, and then we do turning and filling the field. I believe there's one pile for each of the different snow people and 
it's a different pile for each uh, for each of the five variations. But when you match it up correctly, you get the giant version. And you know, it's nice to nice to do that if you can, I suppose. What do you want, Mara? Oh, uh, right. Support the war. All right, I'll accept that because this is the last day to do it. Okay, so that's a version of the quick guide. Awesome. So, f spoilers for the ending of the, the narrative for Frost Bluff, but I'm going to go find out what the mayor wants from me. You look to be quite the useful sort. The workers here have never been overly fond of my policies. Seems to be the most upstart among his peers. You must go spy on him and convince him to talk to you. The rascal won't have a job if he says anything out of place. All right. Well, obviously, we're not going to do that. So we go over to Comrade Rust, and we say, what's up, yo? The mayor is right to send a spy, but you are a friend to us workers, and that is a great boon. Cool. Reason to believe, mayor uses the extra funds from our lord wages and overtime for unsavory transactions. All right, I've seen guard Frostway coming to town tonight to collect the money to bring to the fort down by the lake. Let's go over there. Now, this is an interesting quest because you can do it once per Yule, but once you've done it, uh, or once you've unlocked the ability to do it, the next Yule, it just it's right there waiting for you to uh, to do it at the very start of Yule. Um, which, you know, it's a chance to get another set of clothing, I suppose. Hello, Guard Frostway. I believe you are outmatched. You should mind your own business. Yeah. Okay, and then we can go ahead and set a trap or two. And open the door. Flarian <laughs> says, I tend to accept that quest immediately since otherwise it will show me too many rings. Absolutely. Once once you've unlocked that quest, pretty much every townsperson is like, you should go talk to Mara. Uh, so definitely I will progress that to the point where Mara offers me the choice. And then sometimes, as we can see here, I'll just let it lie. Um, because, yeah, getting rid of the, all the quest rings was the priority. Actually doing the quest kind of falls down in comparison. <laughs> yeah, to learn... Uh, I think it's on the same page. It might not do it, but accept it at least to get those rings off the map. Yes. Otherwise, yeah, your your radar just lights up with quest rings and they're all the same. <laughs> Go talk to Mara. Fine. Oh, but we're going over to the mayor. He pales in alarm as he realizes that you know everything about his irresponsible investing. So, I forced him to give the uh, the jobs back to the to uh, the townspeople, the people of the revolution. On the other hand, it's not so much we're going to give you all your back wages as it is you can get back to work. So. Yeah, you know, we still haven't really taken down this system, but it's a, it's an improvement. All right, and then oh, back to Gareth Rust. Once you've talked to all the workers. Choose one dress, and then tomorrow. 
and then we will never see that again until next fuel. Awesome. So, with that being said, we have a functioning um, guide in English, and I think that one is mostly localized into French and German for the automatic detection of things. Uh, but some of the actual wording has not been updated to French yet. So if anyone is a native French speaker out there who wants Festival Buddy to uh, be a little nicer to use for a French speaker, let me know. We can, we can uh, get some translations in there. But in the meantime, um, we do have some to-do items that are outstanding. So let's come on over and take a look at that. So, um, and we also have a bunch of changes that have been made over the last week or so. Uh, one of the things that was popping up on screen here is that a lot of the Yule quests now have built-in maps. And let's go ahead and, and big in this so we can take a look at that. Oh, and this was a subtle thing. Uh, we've been talking about window scaling recently. And the other thing that I was noticing was that I would put my main window at what I thought was 1x scaling, but it would be just slightly off, like 1.05 or 1.02 or something. And so it was making the window feel a little blurry because it was supposed to be normal size, but it was just slightly bigger. And the difference was small enough that the way it was scaling all the, the image and text made it actually a little bit harder to read than otherwise. And so I've added some logic that says if we're pretty close to 100% scaling, just snap it to 100. And you can see that as you're dragging this back and forth is we're, you know, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one. And the size of the window just stops changing for a little bit. It just snaps into place at one X. Uh, so for a little window around 100%, we treat it as 100% uh, to make sure that you don't have that, that very slight fuzzing of everything. But let's go ahead and, and bring this up. So a Charitable Spirit, we go ahead and highlight that we're starting at Daily Utterage and then it just you know, goes around in a loop. You know, pick, pick your favorite loop uh, style. Uh, with Cold of Ice, um, so the two basic map styles here, oh, oops. I guess we start with the Broken Snowman. Um, there's two basic map styles. One is focusing just on a winter home, and one is going uh, out to the wider Frost Bluff area. And so I didn't try to crop like a bunch of different maps to just the areas. It just was easier to make two maps, one, one for big and one for small. Uh, so Broken Snow Person, you got to pick up filling the field first, then you can get Broken Snowman, a Broken Snowman. Then you can pick up the sticks and the coal, build the snow person, uh, and return to filling the field. Uh, and this is actually a place where I would like to include, the, include those coordinates as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We just had the coordinates here. Uh, let's go ahead and get that into the quest strings as well. So um, quest strings, a broken snowman, build snowman at pile, and I want to say the giant version is at there. Awesome. So what does that look like? Let's take a look. The giant version is at blah. Now it does make it uh, go to the next uh, row, but that, that's fine. And return filling field to Virgil. Awesome. Cold as ice. That's picking up the quest, defeating them, and coming on back. Super easy. Empty keg emergency. I've gone ahead and highlighted the path that I like to use, which is the higher path. Uh, grabbing the keg, coming around, uh, watching out for the guard, uh, and then jumping over the edge. Um, all the theater stuff I haven't really uh, played around with too much. Obviously a map's not going to be too helpful in there. Filling the field, we were just looking at that. Oh, but the text is kind of the same for the both of them. So let's go ahead and grab that. Filling the field. Awesome. Patin says, hail, hello, welcome. All right, making mischief. It's an in-town quest. You pick up the quest, set off the fireworks, pick the pockets, and return. Moving them off. Um, that one starts with guard Kember, and 
Card Kember and Barrett Noah are basically in the same position, but I like to highlight that they're two separate things, so it's one and two, and then the location of the other ones. The order doesn't really matter, like, everyone's going to have their own order that they like to run around in, but, uh, you know, you got to pick an order. Okay, Stuffing the Stuffed, this is one that takes you all over, so you do have to pick up the quest, get the, uh, the bread, get the eggs, get the berries, get the mushrooms, and return on back. Abominable Snow Beast, pick up the quest, go cheer, come on back. Biggest stomach of them all. Uh, this is the location of both Onake and the first table, and also the other four tables. Frostbuff Leader doesn't have a map, so uh, tidying up. Look, uh, quest giver and four of the tables. You don't need to do all five tables. Depends possibly on which tables you do, but you can definitely complete it. Uh, the objective with just these four tables. Unwilling firewood, pick it up. Get the firewood, come back, uh, and finally the last theater one. So. There are other quests that are outside of Winterhome uh, and, and Frostbluff, and I'm interested in adding them eventually, but I don't think uh, they're uh, as important to get in uh, before we ship out the final version of Yule here. But again, it says, very handy. Yeah, um, I really like the ability to incorporate these little mini-maps into the Festival Buddy. Uh, I've, I've, could see someone wanting to do something like this for like a quest helper or a, a quest tracker where it's like, okay, here's where you pick it up and here's where you go to do the things and here's where you bring it back. Uh, but of course there's thousands of quests in the game. So I feel like that could be a very long uh, effort to do all that. One of the nice things though about embedding images like this is while they do have to live on your hard drive and so the the size of a plugin would balloon up with all of these extra quest images um, they're not actually loaded by Lotro until you ask it to so when you make a control and say hey set the background to this image that's the point at which Lotro goes and loads that image off the uh, off of your hard drive so your plugin is not going to take a hit in terms of memory uh, by having a bunch of images, because Lotro's only loading them when you make them. Now, if you make a bunch of controls with those images, yeah, then... Oh my goodness, there's a cat coming. <laughs> hey, you. What's up? It's treat time. Uh, it's a bunch of treat time. I'm sure he'll find them all. I think there's some under the edge here. They're being offered to the other cat who's uh, very comfortably in a, in a cat bed and who's not moving. You. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll keep the cap cam up, cam up as long as they're going to be around. Hey, Casper. I even figured out how to group elements in a scene in OBS, which is not a very complicated thing. I just hadn't tried to do it, so I can I can show and hide both the label and the cam in a single operation, which is very exciting. <laughs> That'll be more useful for some other things uh, where elements are grouped like that, but okay uh, Let's go ahead and open that up and don't care about any of the rest of that cool, so uh, we have um, Updated those two strings that we were just looking at awesome uh, And it's time to take a look at what are what are some outstanding issues uh, that I've noticed the save file format really could use some tweaking for the quick guides because it's currently based off of uh, the index in the quick guide ordering and if you change the order of the quick guide the the save file thinks that the wrong things are marked complete and so that's not good so instead of saving with one we want to save with the the tag here uh, which is a little bit more robust 
Um, I had a goal to add hidden flags so that we didn't have biggest stomach of them all, one, two, three, four, and five in this list. That turned out to be super easy to add in, so I have added it in. Um, the entries are still um, accessible. Um, uh, the, the quest strings are still there. You can't, uh, they're not in this box, but it is possible to see those quest strings as you're working your way through the table. Uh, and we, we kind of saw that without noticing it earlier. So this is done, done. Uh, add type specific, yep, I want to do that. Uh, we've talked about that a little bit. Load quest, we talked about that. Remove the cheer pop-up for Yeti quests entirely, maybe. And we need a background image for in league and ill association. Let's go ahead and do that first because when those quest givers go away, uh, it makes it much harder to get a an image for them. So um, the Bree Festival, uh, Breland Festival Grounds is probably the easiest place to go for this, um, since I don't have easy travel to the party tree. Hi, yeah, you're on camera. Yeah. Can I uh, tilt that up at all? We're gonna, s we're gonna show off the messiness of under our uh, coffee table. <laughs> Everyone's gonna see our batteries. <laughs> you could see better, though. Okay, so here we are at the festival grounds. We're gonna come on over to the uh, the two of these. I actually think, oftentimes when I'm doing a screenshot, I will remove the names, and this is for a background. So, um, let's uh, change to another one and change back. So the background that we see here, that's what we're looking at. And so we, it's gonna be more tall than it is wide, uh, but, text I think will not be a good addition to that. And we also want to turn off those quest rings so we can come on into our options, uh, turning off overhead quest items, uh, icons. And also, um, if you're doing video or recording, you might also want to turn off the overhead non-quest items, uh, icons, uh, things like your vendors, uh, they'll have images over their head. It doesn't matter here, but I'll grab it uh, for completion's sake. Great. Now, if I'm just looking at them, that's probably not the angle I want. So I think this is pretty good. So we're gonna use a snipping tool and go ahead and grab a new snip and see how this works. So in the, this is not a shipped part of it, but in my uh, plugins, Cube Plugins Festival Buddy 2, in source files, uh, we have, Main win back. Yeah, we're gonna modify Festival Buddy backgrounds. And so this is where we go ahead and get that image that we're displaying. And in this case, we're gonna go ahead and paste in. Uh, this is in league slash ale association. And we could go ahead and resize it a bit if we wanted to. But the main thing that I wanted was to get these two here. It would be nice to get all of that. So let's go ahead and uh, scale that layer. And we're just gonna go ahead and, I don't know, try 75% of that current size. And that gives us That gives us a really nice uh, compromise there where we get the banner bunting the lights at the top and we get these two quest givers. Uh, the only question is, do we think it's reasonably centered? And I think the answer is yeah, that's reasonably centered for now. And this is easy enough to change, just swap in a new uh, a screenshot, but it'll be good for now. Okay, so uh, we wanna go ahead and export that as our new background. So we're gonna put that into resources and It'll be the main back 
and we'll go ahead and call it in league ill association. Awesome. So we're done here, and we're going to come on in to our code, and this is going to be probably in the images. There we go, in the illustration background, and we can go ahead and swap that in. And we're going to go ahead and reload this. And we can see the Yule background. There we go. In Lake Ill Association, we now have these two as the background. And that'll be fine for our purposes. Awesome. So we were taking screenshots. We want to go ahead and undo that. So, uh, oops, floating names are back on. And in our options, searching for quest, overhead icons, and non-quest icons, put those back as well. Lovely. Okay. So, um, right now there's no actual quest guides for each of the individual quests, but as a side effect of how the quick guide works, excuse me, how the quick guide works, they need to be there in order for each of those quests to appear in the quick guide. Uh, or possibly in the options, I, I forget which. Um, so, Dance will begin. Well, it's too late then. Okay, so that's great. We wanted to go ahead and do that. We have done that. Let's go ahead and start moving towards committing changes. So we have to do file changes. Uh, we're going to go ahead and commit those. And then we can go ahead and start uh, moving our way through this. So um, in our readme file, added in league slash ale association quick guide based on hunter travel skills. Okay. Uh, so what we want to do is come on in. We've got our readme. We're adding that. Uh, we've got our to-do background image here. Great. Custom background image for in the game Hill association. And for that, we need images. We need to go ahead and take that change and the actual image itself. Um, went into resources and main back. There we go. So that's all the changes just for that one thing. Very cool. Sometimes when I am doing a flurry of activity, coding or, or working in a, a plugin, uh, my commits to source control can get uh, infrequent. And so it's, it's nice just to go ahead and catch up on that. Uh, so, for instance, we can come out, uh, say, um, added a quest maps for many Yule quests. Uh, and to do that, we can come on in, uh, and that's each of these source files. And in the resources, that's each of these. And in the quest strings, that's going to be any of these image tags. So, image here image here, image there, adding an image there. Um, and we'll go ahead and accept that as a single commit. Awesome. And that already makes this much better. All right, coming into our to-dos. Um, Let's go ahead and log that one as well. Okay. So to do add hidden flag, added hidden capability for quests. So 
they don't show up by default on the in the drop down. Awesome. So what does that look like? That's an, a change to the main win. And here we say it's hidden if there's an entry and that entries dot hidden is set to a true value. So if it's not hidden, then we go ahead and add it to the table. So that's pretty easy. Now, did we actually make use of that? Only in new stuff, it looks like. So we can see in the spirit of Yule is a hidden, uh, biggest stomach of them all, two, three, four, five, they're all marked hidden. So we don't need that yet. Awesome. So we're also going to add in the color picker library. Added color picker library from votrointerface.com. So this is a Galahad library. Awesome. Thanks very much, Galahad. Um, and we're going to go ahead and add that and its color picker. Hmm. Let me get rid of that. Alright, so I was finding it very convenient to be able to reload the Festival Buddy plugin easily uh, during development. And this is where, this is kind of boilerplate code. Um, you pair up a plugin, a dot plugin file for your main plugin and a reloader. And so the way that works, the, when the reloader is loaded, it unloads and loads your uh, plugin. And when your plugin loads, it goes ahead and unloads that other plugin if it is loaded. Um, so this, this is very boilerplate. This is just how it works because there's no current way to ask the plugin manager, please unload me and then reload me. Uh, you have to have a plugin doing those things. But when your plugin is unloaded, it can't do the load. So you do a second plugin, it unloads you, reloads you, and then you unload it. And this only works um, if you're, sorry, this works if your plugins have a custom apartment because you're unloading those apartments. Not, uh, not an actual plugin, but in this case, Festival Buddy 2 has its plugin uh, apartment, as does the reloader. Uh, we can see that Festival Buddy 2 has the Festival Buddy um, apartment. Uh, if Festival Buddy 2 reloader was loaded, we'd see it has its own apartment. Um, it can't show the same apartment as Festival Buddy because if it did, then when Festival Buddy tries to unload the reloader, it would unload itself, which defeats the purpose. Okay, so um, added code to support having an unloader. So we're gonna go ahead and add that, but it only works if you have that um, reloader dot plugin um, that uh, and. I think we can ship the reloader here. The only thing that matters is if you ship the dot, uh, plugin file that allows it to show up in the plugin manager. Without that, the rest of it doesn't work. And that's probably fine. Yeah. This reloader just would never be loaded. And this unload reloader function will never find it. Yeah. Okay, so we still uh, have some color stuff to work on, so we're gonna step, skip on that. Um, fixed bug where quests that aren't in quest strings, where fixed bug we're changing to quests that aren't in quest strings, wouldn't clear the quest map, quest image. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and commit that. Uh, it was a subtle bug that I noticed while testing, and it really shouldn't happen because all those quests should be there, but during testing it was definitely uh, popping up. Was this also a bug? Refresh quest guide. 
Yeah, it's kind of the same thing. Let's go ahead and get that too. Okay, this is that change that I talked about. Um, this is maybe not quite the right way to do it because it's, it's based off of absolute pixels. It basically says if the difference between our stretch width and our actual width is less than 10 pixels, treat them as the same. And I didn't bother to do the math to see if in a 2K or 4K scenario, if that would be a good amount of pixels. Uh, it, quite, it could be that percentage-wise would be better. Like if the percentage between where we are and 100% is less than you know one or something, uh, that might be a better way to do it. But this is definitely better than nothing. So uh, fixed issue where stretching near 100%, uh, 100 point, you know, five percent would make the window a bit blurry. Okay, uh, we've definitely made a lot of progress uh, in uh, making some commits there. Let's come on back to the to do's here. Uh, so, that load quest didn't clear the emotes window. Now, the real question is, can we replicate this issue? So if we come on back to Yule, and you know what, just for kicks, let's head on back to the festival grounds. All right, in our options window, we have the ability to simulate um, different things happening. And we can simulate receiving the acceptance of a quest, or the completion of a quest, or the failing of a quest, or um, progressing on an objective. Well, that's not going to work. Other stable master. Thank you. So what we'd like to see is if we move to the abominable snow beast, and then we simulate the completion of that objective, what happens? Can we replicate what we saw in the wild? Um, first of all, what is that objective? Well, I don't actually know. But we know what it should be, which is, I don't know, probably cheer. Cheer. Brought cheer to the Snow Beast 3 or 3. So if we see this, well, that was the wrong key. Uh, if we see this, as an objective, hilarious. Copy that. Uh, but cheer to the snow beast. As an objective, we can see stuff in the stuff progresses, but the emote window does not. Awesome. So we're able to replicate it. When you can replicate a bug, that's just the best thing ever. Because usually that means we can figure out what's going on. So what's the, what is going on here? We have a directive that when you do the Bamos Moo Beasts, when you do the cheer, uh, that when you get that cheer objective, we should do a load quest stuff in this stuff. Okay, what does load quest mean in this? Um, well, what a great question. Let's go ahead and see if we can figure out where load quest is being handled. Probably the main win. Oh, sorry, Qu uh, quick guide win, not main win. So load quest. I don't know why that wasn't showing up here, but it is now. Okay, so our load quest directive equals this. If we're using the quick guide and there's a load quest directive, then what's going on here? Um, 
we should go into load quest. Awesome. Now, if we're doing load quest, and where is this normally called from? We can see we have other emote stuff. Just that. Okay. So, um, we're looking at the emote window here. Where is the visibility of that set? And that is, if we're doing the show screen high screen, cool. Uh, if we're doing the escape key, awesome. Uh, set main when visible, cool. And not during loading of the quest, interesting. Where is it actually, like, great amounts of time. Interesting. Are we recreating that every time? We might be. Um, You want that to be set visible. Okay, so if it exists, then we're updating the visibility. Yep, yep. Now, the fact that we have so many duplications of if it's not nil, then go ahead and high, uh, update its visibility, that's just that we could really use um, a, helper, a helper function then. So we have create emotes assist. Let's go ahead and make a function. Function emotes assist set visible. New visible. Uh, and that'll just be the same. Uh, Meant to copy this. That'll be the same basic idea here. So if that thing is not equal nil, then we'll go ahead and set the visibility end. So that's that visible, but instead of a thing, we're going to go ahead and use that variable that was passed in. So we're going to come on in here and say emotes assist to set visible that setting. Okay, same basic idea. And the reason I'm, I'm bothering to do this is, yeah, if you're finding yourself doing the same thing every time and you're checking it for nil and then doing the thing, checking for nil, what you're setting yourself up for is not checking it for nil one of these times and then just calling set visible. Uh, and I, we can infer that this could be nil uh, because we're checking for it so diligently in these other places. So let's just set ourselves up for success and not uh, be calling this blindly, but have a wrapper function that takes care of doing the check for us. Okay, emote assist set visible, that's going to be false. And we could probably do the same thing with the quick slot assist parent uh, since we're doing, the, uh, since that also seems to be a concern here. All right, take that setting. Now, this create most assist function 
kind of by definition, we just created the thing. So here's a place where we don't need to bother calling out to another function to do it. Um, but, and here's the actual, that, here's that function as well. Okay, so that's great. Um, it's a nice little uh, fix that we've got there. What we'd like to do is go ahead and look at one of those examples of the quick slot real fast. Close hover windows. Right. That seems like a, a thing that we should call. Alright, so create quick slot assist. Great. And here function QS assist set visible new visible end. So we wanted the same thing. We're checking if that's not equal to null, then well, our cat's back. <laughs> Admittedly, he's not looking at us, but we'll take what we can get. Okay, so we have a new visible. We're going to go ahead and use that. But this is going to look very similar to the other one. So if the thing is not equal to nil, set visible to the thing. In fact, you could have a generic function uh, called set visible where you pass a control and it goes ahead and does the check, like, is the thing that you passed me nil or not? And if not, go ahead and call set visible. But uh, I think it's fine for this case to not go that route. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and search for that everywhere and swap it out. So, that's funny, you can see the semicolon uh, is in, it's not necessary at all, but if it were to be used, it's in the wrong place. It should be after the statement, not after the end. Uh, It's not necessary in that uh, location, so it doesn't really do any harm. Okay, so now we can see in the creation of this thing, we're calling a bare set visible function, but by definition, we know that thing was just created, and in the helper function itself. So that's great. Uh, and we can helper window. close helper windows. We know this function exists um, and can be called. Um, yeah, where is this called? Uh, clear selected quest. That's an interesting one. It's called when the festival changes. It's called if we're hiding the main window. Cool. Closing. Uh, okay, it is itself there. And refresh quest guide. Where is refresh quest guide being called? Well, that's funny. Refresh quest guide is in fill main win. Cool. Oh, well, when the quest when this change. Hang on. Okay, I gotta know what shell dot. Dot right line. When is this thing being called? So we want to go ahead and know. And in fact, we can just do a. We can just print out a stack trace, right? Turbine dot um, engine dot get call stack. We can go ahead and just uh, push that out. Okay. So Bombados snow beast. If we do the same thing, and I'm guessing. Oh, we do save that. Nice. Okay. Uh, Objective. Okay, we can see we didn't get a callback here. 
and that's interesting to me. Okay, where else is refresh quest guide called? Um, way deep in the refresh debuff view. Okay. Yeah, okay, that's how it does theater stuff. Cool. Um, debuff is theater. Is that guide is not acting. Girl's been found. Me. Okay. Um, all of that's fine. So when the item changed callback is not being triggered, I guess. Let's go ahead and look at quick guide win. Load quest directive calls load quest. And we, we say set text here, but that apparently isn't calling the callback, which I find uh, surprising. So let's take a look at GD quests, which is a drop down. Let's come on into dropdown.lua set text. All right, so we have the set text. We're going to search for just that spelling of it. All right, when does item changed supposed to be done? Mouse down. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, okay. So when you click on it, then we call the item changed. Okay, so um, DD Quest item changed here. Uh, we just call refresh quest guide with the args.txt. Okay. And let's see what that is. Okay. Uh, so we are looking at Bombless Snow Beast. That's fine. We can see we're getting the text that is displayed there. Awesome. That's easy enough to do. So the short answer would be to call refresh quest guide uh, with that. Because refresh quest guide will eventually call load quest. Well, why are we calling load quest instead of? Because Let's go ahead and do another right line here because I want to double check my understanding of what's going on here. So we're going to go ahead and dump out quest name. Okay, so bombless snow beast. We're getting that in, and that's. Probably the big concern there is converting a quest name. Well, we're getting select a quest out of that, okay. And then we iterate through. Yeah, I I'm not a fan of how these tables are set up in Festival Buddy, but there's a lot of historical design that goes into it. Uh, I'd much rather just having the thing that we have be the key into a table instead of the value of a ta table entry, but that's okay. We're going to come on in here and we want to call refresh quest guide.
and that's easy enough to do. Because the load quest directive, we can translate that. We can translate that. So for instance, load quest equals stuff in the stuffed. Cool. There's a key for that somewhere. Stuff in the stuffed. If we go into our quest strings, no, if, if we just go into strings, um, uh, under Yule stuff in the stuffed, we get the thing that should be. Okay, so if we are in a quick guide, uh, then we say local quest uh, quest name equals and that's going to be in here and so that's lang quests it looks like lang dot quests uh, um, and we're going to be in a selected festival and the load quest directive like that and we can go ahead and do dot notation for the quests Okay, so instead of doing load quest here, if we do refresh quest guide with quest name, then we'll get the automatic clearing of things for us. Okay, so if we come in here and say objective, it does not work. Interesting. Why didn't it work? Okay, so bummers, no beast. If we do the objective, we got rid of the window, we got rid of this text, but the image and the, the drop-down didn't change the way we thought it would. Uh, and this text did get cleared, but the map didn't. Okay, uh, what of my assumptions are wrong? Because certainly something is. We're going to call load quest. We set that text to blank, yes. We close those helper windows, yes. Um, okay, barbine.shell. I bet this isn't getting called. Calling a load quest. Dump of K. So if we um, go biggest stomach of them all, calling load quest biggest stomach of them all. Okay, so that's coming in with the key. Bumble Snow Beast. Okay, calling load quest. Great. So if we come on in here, objective. I didn't call get string on that. Get a string. I'm calling it with a table instead of the string. It's not going to work. Let's try that again. Awesome. So abominable snow beasts. We can go ahead and complete that objective. We get stuff in the stuff and the stuff hides. So that's a more complete way of doing this. Awesome. So instead of calling load quest, we call the thing that will call load quest. And it means more work because that we have to, in that function, deduce the key uh, in order to pass off to load quest. Um, but that's, that's more of a, how do we rewrite this later uh, to make this better? Instead of passing the quest name, passing that quest key. But there is a selected quest global variable that is being populated here. Not a fan of global variables, but uh, this, you know, they, they have their uses. All right, let's go ahead and unload and reload one more time. So if we're on the abominable snow beast, item chain, drop down. Okay, we can see that. Stuff in the stuffed, abominable snow beast. So we can see the drop down item changed is happening there. But when we do an objective here, 
the drop down change doesn't fire off. So that's why we needed to call that. Um, okay, so calling load quest, we can kill that. And this item changed, debug output, we can go ahead and get rid of that as well. Okay, so abominable snow beasts, great. Awesome. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Next, how we handle a load quest directive. <laughs> yeah, you're better on camera. You know, if we just like like right lie down right there. He'd be on camera. That's quite the yawn. Okay. Um, so, fix how we handle a load quest directive. Awesome. So, um, the reality is mostly a lot of those changes we were doing. Uh, are not the thing that does it. This right here, instead of calling load quest, we call refresh quest guide. Awesome. Stage that. None of that is necessary for that change. Okay, cool. Fix how we handle a load quest directive. Done. So that doesn't really answer the question of do we want to remove the slash cheer uh, pop up for snow beasts? And yes. I mean, I'm hearing yes from uh, from Little Redhead. All right, the abominable snow beast. We get the slash cheer uh, window. Um, I could, see, I could see wanting to remove it because it's a single emote quest and therefore uh, you get it automatically on your quest. The only thing I will say is that if your uh, quest uh, tracker has enough quests on it, the, the quest itself might be in an inconvenient spot to click or possibly even off the screen. I think uh, if all 10 quests are on my tracker, they, they spill off uh, below, uh, below the window. But I could, I could see for this, uh, where it's not the theater and there's, a, there's less ambiguity here, I could see that. So if we wanted to do that, then where would that be? Let's go ahead and close some of those windows. Um, and you know what? Uh, we'll go ahead and pull that up, but we should, we should commit some more changes here. Uh, bomb and a bomb. It's an abomination. A bomb and, yep, there we go. Okay, so. We can see emotes. It would be actually really easy to go ahead and just comment that out. The quest tracker provides this emote automatically. So if we commented this out here, uh, come back in and reload, then we'll see that we no longer get the emote window for the abominable snow person. So really, really easy change. Uh, and if we just comment it out here, if someone wants it, they can just uncomment that. Um, pretty, pretty straightforward, hopefully. Hmm. Okay. We can make that happen. So let's come on in and commit that. Oh, we can even make a note on the readme. Festivals. Removed slash cheer pop up um, emote window for we should actually call it out as quest strings. The 
abominable snow beasts. So we're going to go ahead and commit that change here. So it's a readme change, that's a do change, removed, slash your pop up for abominable snow beasts. And that was in uh, quest strings. And it's just this part right here. Okay, um, just checking to see what of these are still reasonable to do items. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, yeah, we're going to pause on squashing bugs and come on in and see what else needs to be committed here. So, to do file updates, toss those in there. Okay, so added helper functions for setting window visibility. And that's going to be this and we should actually double check that we've captured uh, the parameters correctly. So settings dot whatever dot visible. Yep. This was false, 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 false. Yep. False to false. Yep. Settings dot whatever dot visible. Yep. And then adding the two functions. Okay, um, options, this has to do with color stuff that's still under development. Um, updated Yule Quest Strings. This is English Yule Quest Strings to reflect new images. So Tularian, if you are still watching, I've gone ahead and done some updates of text um, because I've added in some images showing locations of quest objectives. And so we can see here uh, that in order to match, you know, one, two, three, four, where, where are we picking up? Where are we going with these things? Uh, or stuff in the stuff is a good example. Um, it's kind of streamlines the description. The textual description no longer has to try to tell you where is this thing because you also have a map to show you where is the thing. So it's just what are you doing at the place now? However, I've only updated the textual description in English uh, at the moment. So that would be a thing uh, that it could be worth going ahead and updating German uh, strings if you, uh, if you get a chance between now and next December. Uh, I'd be happy to incorporate those. So I've commented out the existing English ones so it's easy enough to pair them up with the French and the German uh, and added the new English ones with the references to the map image. So we're going to go ahead and stage that and stage this, stage that, and stage this. And the rest of these are new. So we're going to go ahead and add a quest descriptions strings for additional Yule quests. And that's Biggest Tunker Mall 2345, that's Broken Snowman, all of these have descriptions and maps. Great. 
this is a color thing more color thing more color color oh no the cat's gone <coughs> I don't have a thir uh, third camera for catching him when he's on the couch. Right behind me, too. <laughs> the redhead uh, thinks that when they get close to the snow beast, the quest usually pops up even if my tracker is full. Yeah, the, the edge case that I've seen is that it's already on my tracker and my tracker is quite full, and so it's you know down here by the Lotro store icon or something, uh, which it's still clickable, but it's a little bit less easy to get to. Okay, um, this is all color stuff. Yeah, added large broken snowman pile. that ale association stuff that's gonna be a little bit more stuff all right let's take a look at colors um, a thing that was the case that is true is that second right okay um, so a thing that is true um, is that in order to support the colorization of a quick guide. Let's pop back to the In League Ale Association. Uh, we need to do two things. We need to mark up what is what. Like, all but the good cider, that is a quest. We need to mark it up in some way. And it needs to be something that's not done just when the plugin loads. This needs to be something that's recalculatable. Uh, and how these strings have been declared is statically. Just as the plugin is loaded, we say, hey, this thing is equal to this. And we can't do that if we're going to be recalculating these things. It has to be a function that you can call. Fortunately, Lua is really flexible. So we can say, hey, dot display is either equal to a string or it's equal to a function that returns a string. And then we can go ahead and call highlight location, highlight quests, which are helper functions that can look at the current state of are we highlighting the thing? Um, and where, the, where Lua's flexibility comes in is our helper function can say, or um, in the quick guide window, we can say, hey, if the thing in dot display is a string, then we just go ahead and use it. And if the thing in dot display is a function, then we call the function and we hope that it returns a string. And then we pass whatever we got back from that function or that string into set text. Uh, and that's where we can go ahead and, and if it's just a string, just, you know, yeah, have a static string. Uh, but if it's something where we're dealing with the colors and those colors can be changed, uh, and I was driving myself batty with this because I kept changing the color of a thing, like a quest, uh, and it just wouldn't refresh over here. And it's because those strings were being statically initiated um, and we had to switch to these functions that could be recalled multiple times. Um, so uh, what I want to do next is now that we have the ability to do these um, changeable colors where you can go ahead and re-render uh, re all of them on the fly is we want to go ahead and add these, uh, convert these labels to be checkboxes. I think that's a good next thing to do. Um, and we'll, we'll be completing, uh, committing all of the color changes as maybe a more complete thing here. Soon. So let's come on in to actually as well as quick guides. Uh, 
Um, added color coding, color highlighting to quick guide options. Um, so we've got some readme entries there that we can make use of. Okay, so this is all done in the options window uh, control. So let's come on into options win and quick guide. All right, so there's a helper that creates a color row. Let's go ahead and do a turbine.shell.writeline to remind ourselves what's coming in here. So we're going to go ahead and quote, quote, dot, 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 that label. And dump that. Great. Uh, so when we go ahead and unload that, reload that, we can see we're getting interesting. We're getting past a thing that we will call get string on. Is that useful? Let's assume that we would like to just have a string for now. I may even come back and someday and be like, oh, what was I thinking? But I think for now, it is just meant to be a label. We can pre-call get string on that. Uh, and in color row, I mean, it was not, it is nice to just be able to do it in a single location. Uh, I'll give you that. Uh, but when you're trying to decode what information is being passed to this function, it does make it a little less um, sensible. All right, so now we can see create color row. We get location, question, PC, quest item, awesome. And if we were a little bit more organized, uh, we could use these settings to delve into a table somewhere. Uh, maybe we still can, let's take a look at that. So that's gonna be quick guide at color. Uh, yeah, if options quick guide color, if this was a sub table here, quick guide color equals, and if we in here we had location, and so on. Let's go ahead and quest MPC and quest item. then we should be able to uh, use that same key to index into here, in, and we can also do a construction of the key uh, by just getting these together, but uh, I like it better if we don't need to do that. Okay, so real question, where are we using these things? And the answer is right there. Um, so let's go ahead and kill that in favor of coming on in here, and we want to get that string for, uh, and here we can quick guide color and use that color setting, color setting instead. And then we don't need the label at all. Okay, so that's coming in from here. We're gonna go ahead and nix that. No longer feels like we need an extra line for that. Okay, um, so at that point, all of these should no longer be in use and we can uh, 
remove those. I'm just doing a quick search across the solution just to make sure uh, they didn't get referenced anywhere else by accident. Great. So with that change, create the color, loca lo uh, color row for location. We come on in here and we use that same color setting to do a look up there. Awesome. Oh, but I've done it in the wrong place. Um, so we want to go ahead and bring that up here. Uh, we actually need that to be the change uh, right here. There we go. And now we're no longer using label, uh, and we should no longer be dumping it. snoring cat over there. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, so we're creating those color rows. We get um, location quest NPC quest item. Awesome. Now we have a unified place uh, where we can go ahead and change this label into a checkbox. Um, so that's going to be in uh, Lotro dot checkbox, and just that one change right there. Well, let's take a look at that. I'm going to go ahead and just queue up the loading of this by doing slash plugins space load quote that unquote uh, so that we can easily uh, reload this. Okay, we can see a couple of things. First of all, the checkbox. Um, is shifted down. So we want to go ahead and say set the position maybe up as much as uh, five pixels. Let, let's take a look at that. That's better. Um, let's see what happens if it's zero pixels. Yeah, that's not bad. Um, yeah, one thing I'm not a fan of is uh, the default styling for checkboxes puts the text straight up against the checkbox. And I'm not even sure we can fix that by prepending a space, although I will try here. Okay, if you prepend a space, it's okay. Um, but you, you have to do that consistently. Uh, and we're not doing it anywhere else, so uh, it is a solution. Uh, you, could, you could probably make your own checkbox that does something like that automatically. Hmm. We got a bit of a windstorm coming in. Okay, so we have these checkboxes, but what we don't have is this saved. Now we're getting a color setting, and so we need to come in into our um, uh, settings for the account to figure out how we're going to save this. So location, uh, so everything is in a uh, quick guide, colors, uh, location, quest NPC, quest item. Um, so if we add a new thing, you know, use equals true, for instance. Naming things is hard, and a lot of places you can come back and fix the naming, but save files are an exception, because once it gets out into the wild, you have to assume someone is using uh, that s version of save files. And so if you want to change things, you have to, you have, to have some way to convert from old to new. Fantastic. Hey. Are you going to be Godzilla? <laughs> yeah? You're going to be Godzilla? You're going to squ squish all the little uh, buildings? Yeah. You just be Godzilla. I don't know how uh, cat specific this is, but when Kato gets petted, she, uh, or at least by me, she very much wants to start rubbing her face on something in conjunction. So if I stop petting, she stops wanting to rub her face. 
Um, but you can't rub your face on those buildings very well, can you? No. Yeah, you're just going to crush that little village. Yes. Yes, you just crushed that village. Destroy. Yeah, you just rub against that speaker. It's also not stable, you know. Okay, so we have a use flag. Uh, and that'll be good enough for right now. Uh, it's not really a user facing thing. So what we want to do is go ahead and populate these checkboxes based off of that and then update the checkboxes when they are changed. So the first one's pretty easy. Uh, we want to go ahead and quick guide. Yeah, that's my speaker. Yeah, you just knocked it off the table. Thank you. Did I not tell you it was not stable? I believe I told you this. Yes, I did. I told you. Oh well. Okay, so quick guide location color label. Uh, in fact, that's a, that's a bad name for something that is rapidly becoming a checkbox. So we're going to go ahead and change color label to color checkbox. Great. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and set checked. And we need to set this to our options. So uh, we've already got options elsewhere where we're loading things in, probably. But this is going to be a settings um, account dot something. Uh, this is quick guide, all right. This is colors. Uh, this is delving into whatever our key is, color setting dot use. I think Arthur uh, brings up the old joke, proof that the world is not flat. If it were, cats would have knocked everything off the edge by now. I will accept that as one of many, many proofs. Okay, um, so we can now go ahead and reload and see that these are all now checked. Awesome. Uh, and we, we need to go ahead and add a handler for what happens when we change this. Uh, and then we need to actually pay attention to them. So let's go ahead and check changed. Looks like the one we want. So if we um, go ahead and start typing check our IntelliSense, check change is checked, get it, check, check, check. Yep, yeah, okay. So check changed um, equals, and we're going to go ahead and define that to be a func anonymous function that takes sender args. And in this, we want to go ahead and change that setting. And that's going to be pretty easy. We're just going to say that this equals not this. Just alternate it. So if we do that, um, we can go ahead and reload this. Turn off location. If we go ahead and come back in, we can see that that was persisted correctly. We're still not using it, but that mechanism is hooked up. Awesome. So, uh, what do we have? For cleanliness, sometimes I would like to go ahead and assign this to a local variable since re we're repeating it three times. Um, it's, you know, six of one, half a dozen of another, uh, which, which you prefer. Okay, um, we have a setting. We can persist the setting. Now we need to pay attention to the setting. And in that, we want to go over to Quick Guide. And we have a couple different uh, functions here. Uh, we have Highlight Location, Quest, NPC, and Quest Item. And right now, those are dispatching that to a generic function called highlight, the text, and the color setting. So we already know that we're going to have a color setting that we can use. Uh, so local use color equals settings account, quick guide colors, color setting, perfect, dot use. 
So we have a generic use colors for uh, global, but actually we could go ahead and change this. So okay, it's only two places. Let's go ahead and call, uh, bring in color setting. Change this from is use colors to that and pass the color setting. Uh, and so if there's a settings account and a quick guide, and that's probably not necessary anymore. That was happening when I was doing things statically at load time instead of after everything was already set up. Um, but what we have here is let's grab two things. Local use colors equals, and it's the settings account quick guide use colors. Uh, and then the use color equals quick guide colors color setting dot use. And so the result equals use colors and use color. So if both of those are true, then we're going to return true. Otherwise, we'll be re returning the default of false. Um, and that might actually be enough. So if we go, oh, the one final thing we'll need to do is encourage the thing to redraw itself. So right now, uh, where is color row being used? We don't need that anymore. We need to reload the quick guide wind festival when one of those changes, because otherwise it won't be immediately respected. So set that and redraw it. With all of that, um, we should be able to go ahead and deactivate just quest and everything else stays in. And we can see that's exactly what happens. So if we disable everything except uh, location, then only location is color coded and everything else is just white. But if we want to go ahead and add in the quest name, we can do that. So we have per uh, category colorization, or you can just enable it, disable it entirely. Uh, and if that's disabled, then the status of the rest of these just doesn't matter. In fact, you could change this to be a label if that was, um, but it, that I think that is not worthwhile. Um, the only thing you could say, you could just dis disable that maybe. If enable colors is off, then those don't matter. Now, the one thing that I wasn't sure about is right now, if it, you don't use colorization, then we use quotes to, to identify a thing, like take, quote, a different reminder of Rivendell, unquote. Um, but you know, travel to quote prancing pony in Brie unquote collect um, quote fake Lemiel's vintage unquote from quote Barlam and Butterbur. It feels a little bit much. Um, I don't know. I don't know for sure if that's good. I mean, it could be useful to just have a, a, a checkbox and you know, surround things with quotes, but it feels like a may, maybe I just don't need the quotes at all. I'm not sure. But if that's the case, that's actually a really uh, easy change because in our highlight function, we're either highlighting it with color or we do quotes. But that would be really easy to just say, just return the text. Don't even bother with the quoting. Let's take a look at what that would look like. Uh, so in this case, if we don't enable the colors, then that's the only thing that changes. And I, I think I like that better, maybe. I liked it for quest names, like, but doing it for everything was a little bit much. I'll probably just not do the quoting for right now. This is where we could. Uh, surround the text with quotes or some other way to mark it for now. You gonna come back? Yeah. Alright. I think she may not stay here, but that's okay. 
Um, for now, do nothing. Okay, I think that'll be fine. So here's where we have enabling the colors as a whole and disabling um, some colors, but not all colors. And also, of course, the ability to change the colors. So if you really just wanted everything to be green, you know, some shade of green, we could do that. Now I was chatting with someone, I think it might've been Garlo, uh, that it would be very nice to have this be editable, this, this field right here be editable. Well, oh, that's interesting. Oh, that has, that is extensive, isn't it? Um, we need to fix that before I forget about it. So the check box width is 200, but the next thing is happening at 120. So this one needs to be, this need to be more like 90, I think. Let's go ahead and set the back color to double check that. Set back color turbine.ui.color. something. Alice blue. Why not? Oh, that's why. Apparently, Alice blue is like AKA white. Light red. Green. Sure. Um, we can see it's whiter than we want it to be. Let's check 100. That's good enough. So now you, if you click um, in this space here, you're not uh, selecting or deselecting a checkbox accidentally. That's better. Um, but I will say we can go ahead and move these things over. So the quick guide location color, let's go ahead and move it over by 20. Yeah, that'll give us a little bit more space, uh, especially for other languages, which might use a few more characters to express the same idea. Awesome. So, I'm gonna kill that back color here. Oh, we can see that enable colors checkbox is also quite large. Um, let's come take a look at that. Use colors, okay. Quick guide use colors. Set back color, turbine.ui.color.dark blue. Great. Yeah, we can see that will be unintuitively activating or deactivating this from far away. Uh, let's go ahead and instead of 300, let's go ahead and just call that 150. That's better. Uh, that'll be good enough for our purposes. And then yeah, if you click to the far uh, to the right of it, you'll you'll hit it, but not uh, not all the way over here. Cool. Um, so what do we have here? We have had a desire for type specific checkboxes for location, etc. So you can only use some colors. Done. That was all of that. Let's go ahead and pop that into our uh, source control and see how that goes. Added type specific checkboxes for color. Okay, so that is our to do. Oh, you know, there's so many other changes. Added, added a bunch of color stuff for quick guides. I'm not going to bother to try to peel, uh, peel that all out. Let's see. I will say that's where all of this happens. 
but we'll come back to that in a minute. Okay, so we have our default colors for now is use color, get color, highlight, and helper functions for highlighting locations, quest, NPC, and quest items, and then for formatting specific things that appear in quest guides a lot. Travel to this location, turn in this quest to this NPC. Um, you know, turn in a quest to NPC and that kind of thing. So we're going to go ahead and stage that. I think the cats are quite ready for fireworks. Uh, we're going to go ahead and add in these quick guide colors, that default here, that we that default to being used. Okay. Our options window, we're going to add so, uh, all of the support. Let's take a look at that. Creating the color low, row, that's the function that we were just in. That's a nice helper function. Um, the actual colors section, so using the colors. Hello, little one. What's up? Yeah. You're so tall, you don't fit on this camera very well. <laughs> Okay, um, we'll create the, the four rows, awesome, those comments aren't quite right anymore, we can see that, uh, but I think the fact that we have location, quest, NPC, and quest items clearly stayed there means we're done with that, and the color section. Color section. Yeah, that'll be fine. And we can go ahead and take this now. Uh, create color picker window. Uh, yep, that's its own thing. And that's where we would make those changes we were talking about with the edit editability of that hex code and the copyability. Uh, and I want to do that, but it's not going to be a today thing, probably. Uh, color picker. A window make hex code um, selectable for copying and editable for specific code selection. Awesome. May add buttons for black and white specifically. Um, and that was a something that was brought up is that. In this color picker, which lets you change, uh, select from a lot of different hues, black and white are, are really difficult to hit because they're in these upper corners. Like you have to hit like very specific pixels, and it, may, it might not even be possible. But if you were to add some pre-selected like black and white, or maybe a, a row of common colors here, uh, that might make life a lot easier. Um, I like the idea of that. Again, I think it was DT maybe who I was chatting with. Um, make window bigger, add a row or two of the common 16 to 32 colors. When I clicked, update preview and hex code. But don't trigger a save button. Actually, now that, I, now that I look at that, that could be a thing I get to tonight. I don't know. We'll see. Not on stream, though. We're, uh, we're just about at the two-hour mark, so now's a good time. If you have any last-minute questions, comments, concerns about what we're doing here today, toss them on into the, into the chat there. Uh, and as, as uh, we get everything committed here, we'll probably be bringing this to a close. All right. Uh, quick guide win. Yeah, this is where, let's go ahead and document what we're doing there though. Uh, quick guide win, oops, I closed my readme. Uh, quick guide window, and that's line 87-ish. In order to support colorization of quick guide objectives, 
the display string cannot can't be statically initialized. In this case, it'll it will be a function that we call. Um, and let's not put that in the middle of the initialization of the checkbox, but let's make a little block right here, right outside there. Uh, and then in the initialization of the checkbox, we can use that display. Um, and let's go ahead and name it something better. So we're looking specifically for lowercase display, and we're going to call it the um, objective text, maybe. There we go. Um, now it is called dot display in the file. I'm sure that's why I called the local variable display. Maybe it would be good to keep them that way. I'm not sure. Oh, and he's gone. Um, but for now, I think that's fine. OK. Um, so the objective text we're getting from objective dot display. Could be an argument for calling it uh, text in the uh, in the table setup, so that we'd be calling set text with something called text. But for now, uh, it'll be fine. So in order to support colorization, the display string can't be static initially. This is a function of the call. Okay, perfect. And yeah, if it is a static string, then it can be. It does not need to be a function. It, it will just be a string, uh, and that's fine too. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and bring this in as well. OK, let's go ahead and commit that. And let's see what we have here. Um, this is some reorganization of the order of stuff in the quick guide for Yule, but we also have the load quest stuff, um, which is what triggers the quest um, window to be showing you what's next in the quick guide. So, um, we reordered Yule quick guide and added load quest directives. Okay, great. Read me updates. Okay, the last two are in league ill association ones. Uh, the first one is um, at first this was only ill association quests, and so this is adding in all of the in league uh, data as well. So added in league quests and that's pretty sure everything here why does it look like it's deleted stuff where are we line 239 sure Oh, it's just lining things up poorly. Okay, that's fine. So that's adding that. And then this one is that's all the colorization stuff up there plus adding the quests. So uh, we could break the we could break this into a couple different things. So all everything down here is the new stuff. And up here we could add it or not. I'm I'm gonna just put it out in two, two commits here. Um Colorized in league in league ill association. Good. Awesome. Now the other problem with the colorization is that uh, it's a little bit trickier. In English, definitely things are very regular. 
Um, I worry about for German or French that there could be com some conjugation issues with some of the drinks maybe being masculine and some of them being feminine that makes that drop-in solution where you just call a function to format it less, um, less straightforward. But I think we could add some functionality. Like you could say, oh, if we're in German, then when we're formatting this, maybe take advantage of an optional gender parameter to a function or something. Uh, but we're not quite there yet. Uh, have to have to speak with some native speakers on that one. Okay, um, but we have we've <laughs> committed so many changes. Uh, I'm going to push those out now, so they're backed up in someone else's computer. Perfect. And we've made some really good progress here. Uh, certainly, there's more stuff that we could do for Yule. I didn't even hit the theater this year. Uh, I know that's uh, some place people spend a lot of time at, so. Uh, before next deal is done, maybe even before it started, I'll definitely be addressing some of the theater stuff, maybe some of the, the outlying quests in other places as well, getting them into the quest guide as well. But hopefully uh, the addition of a quick guide for those people who just want to charge through and get uh, their 10 done, get as many tokens as they can, hopefully the, the quick guide uh, makes a lot of sense and these maps uh, help people find things that maybe are a little bit more confusing for them. Uh, one thing about the quick guides, as always, um, for Yule, for instance, if you don't want to do most of the eating competition, you want to do the first one and not the rest of them, you'll be able to come in here and disable um, parts one, two, three, four, and f sorry, parts two, three, four, and five, but just keep the part one, for instance. And then that would look like um, eat for the first station, turn it in, done. Um, neat. Well, I think this is a good start to uh, expanding uh, the quick guide capacity of the Festival Buddy plugin, uh, and I'm looking forward to using it next to Yule. Maybe uh, this Yule for a couple more characters as well. All right. Well. With that said, and with no last minute questions or comments coming on into chat, I think that's everything we are going to cover today. Uh, I think there's been a very successful uh, series of videos covering adding Yule content into the Festival Buddy plugin. Uh, and I think we're getting well set up to have a much more robust Festival Buddy for all of the different uh, festivals. So. With that, thank you very much for joining me on this exploration of Lotro plugins, and I hope to see you here next week. And until then, keep plugging along. All right, bye-bye now.